Hey everyone, Tim from Chamfazone here. Welcome back to the ZBrush part of our Maze tutorial. Let's go over to import and let's jump straight into the action. Let's select that Maze and let's just drag it here into the viewport like that. And then let's switch over to our edit mode. So here we have it in ZBrush and all we have to do is add a nicer material here. I like this matcap white material. And then let's already save our scene here in the ZBrush folder. I just always like to show this step because a lot of people just forget about saving their scene. You can also save it as a Z tool if you want, which basically means it's saved without all the clutter almost as if you export an OBJ and so on. So here on the sub toolbar, you see we have our maze as one object. Let's go over to geometry and then here under modify topology, we want to hit that close holes button just to make sure that everything is perfectly waterproof and sealed off pretty much. Let's enable this poly frame view and let's go over to poly groups and say auto groups. So now ZBrush has identified all these objects here as different sub tools. And now under sub tool, we can split that. Let's go over here to the split and say group split. So everything that was identified as its own color is now one sub tool. And somehow this object here, if you press Alt on it and take it into isolation view here where it says solo, this one messed up. So I'm gonna go over to polygroups and I'm gonna say group by normals. And now it's two different colors and we can then go back here to the subtool bar and split that up again. Get out of the solo view. And now everything here is properly separated. And let's get just out of this polyframe view here. So there are these different objects that we now have to prepare to do our high poly work with. And I'm just going to start here with this ring and select our trim brush. Make sure you watch the introduction to ZBrush tutorial. And we want to go over to our geometry tab here. And now it's time to basically zoom in and demonstrate this is the 3D Max Turbo Smooth. And now we're gonna make a Z remeshed version out of that. So here you see the change. This is our Z remeshed version. I'm gonna press Ctrl D to get some subdivisions in there. And I wanna have at least four subdivisions here so that once we are using our trim brush on that, we have enough polygons here to work with. Let me just zoom in here. And actually that's still too low res. So I'm gonna make one more division. That brings us to 1.6 million. But now we have it really nice and smooth here if we do our high poly. And you can see how that didn't affect the other side. And that's because we don't have symmetry enabled yet. Let me undo that. And I'm going to use activate symmetry on the X, Y and Z. And then let's try this again here. Now we have it on this side, but now we also have to turn on local symmetry here so that we affect it basically also there at the bottom. And this is what we want here. So pretty much just a quick reminder for how the symmetry works. And that is very essential here for this workflow. And another thing I want to show you is that if we make a line here very much zoomed in and then here from the distance, you will see how it's also depending on where you are with the camera. So keep that in mind. Another thing is that if we want to make a stroke here like that, it's going to get blocked by the subtool that's in the way. If we use the ghost mode, we can now also do work basically under the subtool. So that is another thing that is important to remember. Transparency and ghost mode here. So let's make our first detail line here. 
press Alt to make a C subline and pressing Shift at the same time will make a connecting edge. So let's rotate around 90 degree and then let's make another line. Actually, I'm going to undo this one. And first, I want to be here in our ghost and transparency mode. So now I'm going to take this edge down here and then have another C subline that is going along this cylinder that we have there. So that way it looks like this thing is actually properly built into that ring. And here we can have another C subline. On a second thought, let me control Z this and start with a Z add line to make this kind of a detail there. And then let's have a Z subline coming around it here. So I'm still using draw size free here so far. Let me just connect this down here as well. And when I mean down, I also mean up because we're working on both sides. Now I'm going to change it to draw size free. And I want to have quite the big Z sub detail here, followed by a Z add detail. Now let's put it back to draw size two, which is our regular draw size. And let's make a connecting line here with a Z add information going to bring that around here and then I'm going to press alt to make a C sub in between. That way we can break up the edge flow a bit and make it a bit more interesting. And I'm going to have more Z add followed by C sub here. And then we can fill this C sub here with another stroke of C add to get an interesting detail in there. So just earlier we were having the Z add followed by a C sub and then here into this gap, I'm going to fill it with some more Z add information as well. And then let's snap in here with our shift key. If you press F, you can zoom into the object and then I'm just going to rotate it to this element here, put it to ghost mode and I'm just going to follow it all around here and it's not a big deal if you can't make it in one go it can sometimes be a little bit hard to achieve that with a perfect round circle but it's not a problem to just stop and then carry on with the line and i'm just going to fill this here with the same kind of an element that we already have on the other ones and then I'm just going to add one more line here. Let me just frame this pressing F and the shift key so that we are snapped in. And I just want to have one more C subline here. Just going to add a bit extra here to the top to make it more connected. And then let's zoom in here from that angle. And let's make this one a little bit more detailed. I'm going to use our C sub as well here. Let's connect that up here and then I'm going to have another C sub line that is sort of following its lead. So now we have this element here pretty nicely detailed and we even have some variety on it. Let me just make that a little bit more strong there at the top. Sometimes it's necessary to just go over it again in a certain part, especially where you have one line connecting to the other. So next, let's select one of these spikes, put it into isolation mode. I'm gonna press Ctrl D. We have three subdivision levels. I'm just gonna delete the lower ones and press our Z remesher. That way we make sure it's already smooth when we apply the Z remesher. And the smoother the mesh, the better the outcome for Z remesher. So now we have our Z remeshed mesh and we have to divide it. I'm going to have it divided four times, which brings us to around 300,000 active points. Let's enable our symmetry on the X and the Z. Let's just test it to see if it works. Actually, I want X and Y. So with the X and Y, make also sure to have your local symmetry on 
we're gonna then take it here into the side view and let's just start with the C subline. I'm gonna press shift and connect it here to the upper part and then here in the back I'm gonna have one of these Z add details and put a C subline under it. And then I'm gonna frame this here with another C subline. And then I'm gonna use our C sub two times. It's gonna be really strong because we have symmetry on and we are right there in the center of the axis. So that means we basically work with twice the intensity and that's why it produces these strong results here. And I'm gonna have these details here in it. C sub followed by C add. And I also wanna kinda break this edge up here so that this looks a bit more interesting and it's not just this perfect cylinder there. The same kind of detail, C sub and Z add. And then I'm gonna have another line here with C sub and connecting it here on the other side. So usually I like to start with the C sub lines and then I'm gonna place Z add lines right next to them, which is gonna result in a really nice look for our normal map then. So we have both the height information and the depth and this is gonna make a really nice normal map. So over here, I'm actually gonna have another C sub line framing this detail that we did there. And over here, I'm also gonna have another one. And those lines, I'm not actually gonna follow with a C add. I think that would be a bit too much. So sometimes I just use the Z add in support and leave other parts with Z sub only, especially here on such a very small detail like this spike. So now that we have this spike, we don't need to do the rest of them. We're just gonna export this one spike and copy it to the other places later. For now, let's divide this part here. Let's delete the subdivision levels and then use Z remesher on it which takes a while to load. And then once we have that, we want to make sure to also give it its subdivision. And let's have four levels for it as well. That brings us to around 450K. And we also want to turn our symmetry on. And we need it not only for X and Z, but let's also enable it here on the Y axis. So now let's press F and just snap into any of the sides. Doesn't really matter exactly where you are. And we're gonna proceed here with a C subline and basically go all around it here. Let's rotate it 90 degree and snap into that other side here. And then we're gonna have that same C subline just following a bit of a different path. Let's go back to this one and I just wanna emphasize that a bit more there. Like I said before, sometimes you have to make the same stroke a couple times. And over here, let's also carry on with the C sub. And I'm just gonna take that here into isolation mode so that we don't have so much distraction with the other stuff and also it's a little faster. So I'm gonna have one of these Z add details here on top and I'm gonna have a C sub and a small Z add under it and then kind of frame it here. Let's go in the top view, frame it with another C sub. So let's take a look here at that side and I wanna have a Z add line here to support this. Just gonna have it here to the center where we connect it. And then also over here, let's connect it with a Z add and then let's rotate. And over here, let's also connect it. 
with another Z add, and then I'm gonna have a C sub in here. Rotate around again, and let's also have some C sub information over here. And then we're just gonna have a little Z add information in there as well. So as the next thing, let's work on the main body of the maze, pretty much what's going to be the wood part. So with Alt, let's select it and let's take it into isolation mode. And then let's divide it three times here. And let's delete the lower divisions and then use our Z remesher. And then let's also give our Z remeshed version some subdivision levels. And that is not enough. Let's give it another one so that we have five subdivision levels here and 1.3 million points here to work with. Let's enable our symmetry for X and Z. And I'm gonna snap in here, press F and Shift to snap and to frame it. And then let me go over here to our ghost mode. And I wanna have our draw size at nine, the brush size at nine, so we are working with a bit more of uh, intensity here now in order to get this carved in here what's going to be a metal element that's kind of in the wood there so now i'm gonna put it back to two and i want to add some lines here that are basically the metal frame for it later once we texture it Let's take it all the way around here. And that would be a case of just going over it here once more to give a bit of extra depth. Somehow I changed my draw size by accident. I want to have it at five for these kinds of details here. which is gonna look nice once we texture it and put it to a gold. Let's have the draw size back to two. And then let's follow this Z sub line here with a C add line to frame it. And now let's also have a Z sub line here in the inside to give that a bit more of a contrast. Otherwise, it looks a bit too soft. And now let's rotate this around here. And I want to have the draw size at nine. And add one of these big details here. And then with five, I'm going to add one of these Z add details in there. So now we can go back to two and add a support frame around it here with C sub. And then let's have another one of these C sub lines, kind of framing it here from the inside. And let's also follow that around this piece that we got there. So now let's rotate into a vertical position here. I'm gonna press F to frame it. And then we can just scroll up here and add some details. I have brush size two to make some connection here so that this actually looks like it's some sort of a metal cap. Let's also have a C sub line over here. And then let's have another, let me undo that another parallel line that goes above it. And I'm just gonna follow that twice here so that it's a bit more intense. And then here on that side, and then I'm gonna change the brush size to six. And I wanna have one of these C sub details here. I'm gonna put the size to four and then fill it with a Z add. So now let's put it back to two. We should always try to work 
with the same brush size for the most parts. But of course we can make some exceptions for these bigger details. And I'm going to follow that here with a Z add. And then also here on that side. And let's take this even further. It still looks a little empty there. So I want to have a Z subline. And then we're going to take it down here. And I'm going to follow it twice so that it's a bit more depth to it. And also have a Z add line here as a support. So now over here on the other side, I don't want to have exactly the same detail. So I'm going to take the C sub, but instead of taking it down, we're going to just have it follow up there. And then let's add some Z add here to it. And then let's just have some extra Z add line here coming over here to that side. And I'm going to have more C sub here following along this detail. And let's just bring that up here. And let's see how that looks here once we get out of the solo view. Now this definitely looks like it could be metal once we put a texture on it. And the other part below it is wood. It's going to make a very nice contrast. So let me zoom out. And I want to go over here to our grip. I'm going to only have the X symmetry on for that. Let's take it into isolation view. And then let's scroll up. And let's have some C sub frame here where the fingers would be. We're going to fill the inside of these parts later in Substance Painter with some diamond pattern. So for now, we are only concerned about having the high poly edges here in place. Smaller stuff like diamond pattern or grip, like these super fine details is better to do in Substance Painter. I mean, we could also do it here, but then it's final and you can not choose to have a different pattern on it. So that's why it makes sense to make it in Substance Painter for the small stuff. And I want to have brush size five here to add these extra C sub details here. Let me just try that again. And a bit further up. Now that looks better. And with draw size free, we're gonna add these Z add details in there, which could also be gold and have some nice contrast later once we texture it. So now we have this hand part here with the Z sub. And let's also follow this detail here with some extra lines. So far also only C sub. Let's see what it looks like here from the side. And then let's put our brush size to free because here in that case, I want that to be standing out a bit more. Otherwise, Let's try to always stick with brush size two, but some exceptions can definitely be made. And over here, let's just have it with free to get some extra depth here for this grip part. So now let's add some extra C sub here and also down here. And now I want to take it back to brush size two and fill that here. I guess you could call it a filler element. Always trying to come up with names. 
then I end up having tons of different names for the same details in those tutorials because I keep forgetting it. And here, let's just frame it with a C subline, basically a second C subline in brush size two that follows the brush size three C subline. Let's also take a look here at the bottom and back to brush size three, let's add one of these Z add details. and a C sub to frame it on the top. And once again, we're gonna make it more interesting in Substance Painter with some diamond grip pattern. For now, let's isolate that there and let's just use Z remeasure on it. Let's give it four subdivision levels. That brings us to half a million points here. And now let's do something here with our light box. Let's go over here to our brushes and I want to use these tracks. So let's double click it. And you can see if you try to apply it here that it doesn't quite work now. Let's use it with a bigger brush size. Let's see, this here is obviously too big. So let's roll back and have it at maybe seven. So it's basically a matter of testing it. And then we need to go over here to stroke. And I'm just gonna unplug this so that we have it here on the right side. And where it says lazy mouse, we wanna enable it. And now you can see that we can make a stroke all the way down here. Let's also put our lazy radius up and also our Z intensity. So lazy radius at 50 and intensity also. Let's put symmetry on X and then let's follow this, but we want to have ghost mode on so that the other sub tools don't affect it. Let's bring that up here. And now we have pretty much this detail here on the side, which is gonna make it look a bit more menacing and brutal. So now let's switch back to our trim brush. And we wanna take this hand guard here into isolation mode. And let's also add some details to it. So I'm gonna use our C sub here and kind of follow along the sides here of that hand guard and also bring it here into the inside. Let me actually also make use here of the lazy radius on our trim brush. So I'm gonna have it at 53 and that way it's easier here to make one connecting stroke. And I also wanna kind of connect it there to the inside. We're gonna make the actual connection later. For now, let's just focus here on that side. And now we can find some interesting path to connect this. So let's use the shift key to make a connecting line here. Otherwise it's a bit difficult. And then we have this one that we also want to connect. And I'm just going to have it come in there to that line, not all the way down. And here, let's kind of follow this curve that we have. And this is essentially what makes it so awesome in ZBrush to do these kinds of details here that would in 3D Max otherwise take a very long time or it could almost be considered impossible some of the things that we can do here in ZBrush. It would just take a very long time, let's just say that. Nothing is impossible I suppose. So let's just have some more C-Sub here 
and let's add one of these filler details and let's frame it here let me just take a quick look here with out isolation mode where we are because we have this other sub tool there on the inside so we just want to make sure that these details actually properly frame it and I'm gonna have some Z sub and Z add detail here which I'm gonna frame and then I'm gonna have more C sub coming down here to make that a bit more interesting connect it and I also want to follow this here along where we have that cylinder there right next to it that's why sometimes it's good to jump out of the isolation view to see where we are and same here let's make this so that it looks like it's somehow connected there I want to have another C subline here, which then joins it over here to the one that we were just drawing there. And yeah, this whole handguard piece is a bit time consuming to create because it's not perfectly symmetrical when you look at it from a vertical point of view. So that's why we have to put some extra work in here to detail that out and it also has the sides to it for example now we have the top part here that's also still missing some interesting details so let's see what we can do here essentially the weaponsmith put some thought into where he put the details this is the kind of thing that we want to sell here through that high poly the work that we're doing here and let's just have also here our C sub lines and then follow them with some C add lines plus some extra C sub here and then frame it here with some extra C sub and yeah essentially like I was saying before C sub and C add in combination that means both height and depth and this will sell it to the normal map that will look really nice once we bake our textures later on let's see what else we can do here this might still look a bit empty here so i'm gonna have another line following the lead of the other line and then also over here similar to the detail that we have on the other side but here i'm just gonna have two of these lines let me undo that because that was kind of intersecting there with that sub tool so i'm going to place it over here that's why it's important to toggle on and off the isolation every once in a while and here we still have a line that's leading to nowhere and we can't have that so let's make some extra line work here let's also make that a bit more interesting by adding this line and then let's zoom out I think the handguard is looking good for now let's concentrate on that piece I'm gonna go over here use our Z remesher and let's subdivide it four times put our X Y and Z on and our ghost mode and I'm gonna have it here at brush size free let me just undo that I also want to make sure I have local symmetry on 
because I want these details to be both on the upper part and at the bottom. And essentially we put that detail where the handguard goes in. So if we make a connection here with the C sub and the Z add, then you can already see how at the bottom part it looks like it's actually connecting together with the handguard. So that way, once again, we make sure that everything looks like it sort of makes sense. And meanwhile, I'm making more C sublines here. So now let's take this into isolation mode. I'm just gonna have a bit of extra Z sub here so that this corner looks a bit stronger. And I wanna have a Z add here on top. And then here, let's make a C sub to make it a bit more interesting. Let's fill it. And then let's snap in here to that side and also use Z add with C sub. And essentially, you see how fast we can detail out here a pretty boring looking cylinder with some interesting lines and sci-fi look. And I think by now you also get the idea. It's really a matter of Z sub and Z add lines. Once we have our mesh prepared and ready for sculpting. So over here, we have this sphere. Let's put our local symmetry on. X and Z is what I want for that one. And then let's Z remesh it. And let's just give it a few subdivision levels here. I'm gonna have four. 1.2 million polys. Sounds enough. So let's continue here while we are in isolation mode and let's add some Z sublines here. And I'm gonna have another one here that's gonna sort of connect up there. And this part here, let's just jump over it pretty much with another line. Now this part here, let me just undo that. This part I actually wanted to come down here. So that way it's not just this flat line, but we make it more interesting. And then have this line here connect with it. And I'm just gonna undo that because I changed my mind. I want that to go up here, which is gonna look more interesting. And now let's put the brush size to three to add a bit of this Z sub detail here. And then I'm just gonna have also with brush size free, a filler detail in there. So over here, we could do the same thing, still in brush size free. Let's add this and then also have one of these in there. And now let's just go back to brush size two and do some Z add lines here. Z add plus Z sub to have one of these fillers and then just take it up here as well. And then here on that side, we also wanna connect it here with Z add. And let's have some more Z sub lines here. Bring it over here to the other side. And then let's bring that further down here to make this detail stand out even more. Followed by a Z add. Let's take this here. And now I want to have another C subline here coming out of this. Otherwise it's too empty there. First, I wasn't sure if I wanna have something there or not, but if you look at it from that side, you also wanna see something interesting and not just this 
metallic sphere. Let's carry on here with some C at connection. And let's take a look. We might want to also add some extra fillers here. Let me just frame that with C sub, otherwise it looks a bit too blurry. And this is pretty much enough here for that sphere. Let's select this piece that we got there. It's at the bottom of the handguard and I want to have X, Y and Z and our local symmetry on. So let's take this here into our ghost mode. We have 700 points on it with three subdivisions. And then we're gonna have a C subline here and on that side also. We don't need to have too many details here on that. This is already enough, I would say. So let's carry on with something else. And since we are already here at the bottom part, let's carry on with one of these. So I want to have active symmetry for the X axis. Let's give it the Dynamesh and let's subdivide it four times. And then I want to have brush size free and give it one of these Z sublines here. This one's a bit difficult to work on because it already has this angle on it. And then with brush size 2, let's add a filler inside. And since this one has this perspective on it, this angle, we can only work with the X axis on it for the symmetry. So another one of these filler details here. And then here from that view, let's have a Z subline here and another one here on top. And I don't think we need much more for this. For this uh, spike, I don't want to have as many details on it as the one on the top or else it looks identical pretty much. So now let's select that piece here and let's just go over to symmetry. Make sure we have it for X and Z so that we work on all sides at the same time and let's give it the Z remeasure and let's subdivide it four times. So let me take that one into ghost mode and let's snap it into place and actually it's better if we have it here from the side view. That way we cover more area. And I'm gonna have a brush size of 3 here for that one. And let's just carry on with some C sublines. And let's just take it pretty much there to the inside. Kind of disappearing there in the inside. And I'm just gonna use the shift key to make that easier for us here. To follow that perfectly straight line on a bit of an angle. So now with brush size 2, let's have another line that's kind of going parallel to the ones that we were just making. And then also with a shift key. Shift key is our friend. And here with draw size 3, let me undo that. Draw size 3, let's add one of these filler details here on the side of it. And then with brush size 2, let's add a bit of a filler detail. Let me get closer so that we have more intensity. Remember, the further we are away, the less intensity we have when we draw. So that needs to be remembered sometimes. So now I'm going to have brush size 2 with a C add connection here. And then also here on that side. Let me just redo that. Sometimes a bit hard when there's such a angle. 
And this one here, let's also have a Z add line supporting it. And the same goes for here at the bottom. So I'm going to have a Z sub over here to break it up a bit so that we just don't have one constant flow of Z add there. And now I'm going to show you how we redo something without having to use control Z. So we did some stuff up here in the beginning and we don't want to roll back all the way if we want to change it. What we do instead is going down here to a lower subdivision level and blur it out. And I only want to target that upper line to be specific. So one by one, we start at subdivision two, then three, then four. And then we have it pretty much blurred out to a point where we can just make a new line coming out of the old one. And basically, I just want it to be a bit more connected there that this ends right before it goes into that metal or wood frame. So I'm just going to have some interesting extra details here. Also one of these fillers. So as a next thing, let's select that piece here. And we want to divide it once. Put the target polygon count to a 10 and then activate symmetry on X and Z. And now let's Z remesh it. And the reason why I changed the default setting there to a 10 is that with the default one, it's going to produce some nasty fragments there in these corners. You can still see them. And that's also why we want to only subdivide it once for now. We have one subdivision level now and we can smooth it out a bit here. Press shift to smooth it. And now let's just bring it to a third subdivision level and that should be enough here for us to do some work on it let's have brush size 2 and then add some lines here with our c sub and then here on that side let's do that again where we then have the lines going up and not down like on the other side it's always good to have a bit of a contrast when you look at it from different angles. And then let's have a parallel line that goes under it. Let me just frame this here and take it into a side view. And let me just do that in ghost mode so that we see these pieces that are sticking in there. I want to have a brush size of eight. And now we have to do the same thing here on that side. So that it looks like these pieces are actually merged in there properly and not just sticking in there somehow. And now with our brush size of two, Let's add some supporting lines around that. Also here on that side. Unfortunately, we have to do that on basically two sides because our symmetry doesn't cover it for all four of them. So now let's take this line here and wrap it pretty much around there. Then let's rotate over and connect it and now let's just take it back into the solo view because we just wanted to see how it looks like there with these pieces that are sticking in it and now we can have some extra C sub lines here to make that a bit stronger otherwise it looks a bit weak and also here Let's zoom out again. And then let's also think about these sides here. So I'm going to have 
a line that comes here from the bottom and then connects here to these sides. Those are the small details, but those are the ones that are really going to sell it. That's the stuff where then if you have it in front of the camera, you know, as a first person weapon, people will realize, oh, there are some small lines there. That's cool. So this is pretty much the idea. Attention to detail. And now we also have to do that here on that side. And once again, using the shift key helps because that way we don't have to freeform that. And then let's bring that also down here like we have it on the other side. Let's zoom back in here and let's add some of these filler details here with extra C sub and then let's fill it. And now we also have to do it here on the other side. Doesn't matter if it's not perfectly at the same spot as on the other side. In the contrary, that just makes it more interesting. It's not a perfectly modern weapon. So maybe you can picture a dwarf who's forging that with some little inconsistencies here and there. And that adds to the charm. I'm just going to go over this here once more. These lines, I feel, were not strong enough here. So I'm just going to have some extra Z sub line here to make it a little bit more contrasty there. And I'm just going to use the shift key to do that. And then let's take a look at it here from that side where we also have to do that. And we are still not done with that piece. I want to add more details to it. And especially here at the bottom, this is kind of ideal to add some of these fillers. Let me just make sure to give this here some extra strength as well on that side. I forgot it. And now with brush size free, let's add some of these details here. Back to brush size two. Let's add the filler for it. And then on that side here, let's do the same thing. And brush size two. Let's get out of the solo view and let's see where else we can add some details. And now that I look at it here, let's go back to that piece. I just noticed that this would also look good if we had some extra detail up there. So I'm just gonna make a quick jump over here. Add this filler detail. Later we're gonna copy it to the other side where right now we have the empty piece without the details. But for now let's go back here to that piece and do some more work here at the upper part. Still looks a bit too empty right now. So I'm gonna have a detail that comes down here. Just gonna redo that. This one here looks better. And then here on that side, we also redo this. I wanna have the same kind of a piece here. And then connect it with our Z add lines. Take that down here. And let's just rotate around it. And also here on the upper parts, let's strengthen the whole thing a bit here with a Z add. And now let's see if we do something else on it. I think we should also have a filler here on that part. So this one, I'm going to do a vertical filler. 
And then here on that one, let's have a horizontal one to kind of change it up. With brush size free to make it a bit thicker. And now let me go over here to where we have this dome, as I like to think of it. Let's use the Z measure on this and let's subdivide it five times so that we have a million polys here. Let's have symmetry on at X and Z. Let's put the brush size to two. And then let's just have it here snapped in from the side view. And let's add some C sublines here and also one right there where it kind of merges into the other part of the maze so that it looks like it's not just floating there or sticking in. So here I'm going to have one of these fillers and then here with more C sub, let's put some extra lines. And here on that side, let's have a Z add and another support line of C sub. And yeah, control Z is your friend. Sometimes it just doesn't work out the way you think and then it's just a matter of control Z and do it again. And over here, let's also bring that down with another parallel line. And then let's have a support line of Z at here following it around. And also here on that side. And then here on the upper part as well. And you might wonder, okay, there are some noisy little dots here and there. Is that not going to be awful in the normal map? And the answer is no, it's not going to look bad. It's actually going to add to the charm. Sorry, let me just undo that and do again. And it's really the perfect thing for this kind of a fantasy themed weapon. It's going to look great. And something like, let's say, an AK or an AR-15. I don't know if that workflow would work for it here in ZBrush to make all these, you know, lines, all these edges um, with the trim brush. I have never tried it. I would doubt that it's as good as 3D Max. So I also never bothered trying it, to be honest, to see how that would work on a like real life weapon that's supposed to be hyper realistic. But for these things that we're doing here, it's just great. I'm working on Warframe, which is a third person game. So the weapons that I create for Warframe are obviously also meant to be third person. But this weapon here, it's definitely meant to be first person. The poly count we're going to have for our low poly and also the texture resolution can be at 2K if you want. So let's carry on here with another one of these spikes and I'm just going to Z remesh it and give it free subdivision levels and then have our symmetry here at X and Z. And let's carry on here with some more filler details. And also here a Z subline. And here let's just bring it up to do the opposite of what we did at the other side. And now let's carry on here with another C sub and connect it like that here. Let me just jump out of the solo view and go in the ghost mode. 
and let's follow this here with some extra C sub. And let's take that back into solo view and have some extra C sub also framing that part here. Otherwise it looks a bit too soft. So now let's take another look here at the top view. And there is one part that I don't like yet. So in order to get to it, let's select the dome and let's snap it in here from the top view. Let's zoom out, but now I actually want to select this piece here, which from the top view looks too empty right now. So let's also put our Z symmetry on here. And then let's have a line here, a C subline that's following that shape of the dome. And let's take a look at it here from the side, connect it. And over here, let's also make some sort of a connection. And this is the awesome thing with ZBrush. You're just so flexible. Let's also have another C add line here. And then follow this down here. So that should be enough details here for this. Now there is one thing that I want to add still, which is back here on that main body of the maze. Right now it's a little bit empty there. And I want to add something that looks like it's some sort of an integrated metal. I'm going to just rotate our maze here into place and put a draw size of eight and then with shift, Let's add this detail here. The problem is we can't entirely snap it in with the camera because those things are basically on the side where we don't have the snap for it as well as the symmetry. So we have to basically freehand it. Now let's put a draw size of four. Let's zoom in here and then at this filler here. That's gonna be probably gold later on in the texture. Gold on metal. And I'm gonna have it back to draw size free to make another support loop here around that because it still looks a little bit weak. And that might require a few control Z's, but I guess I got lucky here. So now I want to have one of these details here on the side to give it some extra interest there. And now this is not so empty and I think we're pretty much done with the mace. Let's just do one more scan here. And now I'm seeing those spikes down here. They don't look good from the back. Let's take it into isolation view. Let's press B and then press S. That will select our standard brush. And now I want to go over here to make it a drag rect. And then let's just select alpha 14, put up our intensity and let's just try to hit the center of it while pressing alt. And now without alt, we can add basically a Z add in there. So this is another way that you can add those details by using the drag rect and just draw any alpha information onto your high poly. So now we still have to do some more work, but it's not much. We have to copy some parts into place. Let's go to the move tool, press that pivot button. And I'm just going to show you what happens if you have symmetry still on. It won't land in the center. Now with symmetry off, let's try again. And now we have it perfectly centered. 
So now we have it pivoted here in the center and we can go to our sub toolbar and then we want to duplicate that ring. So now we can take it and put it into place where that other ring is that doesn't have the details on it. And now let's press shift and rotate it 60 degree here so that we have a bit of a change in the details. Let's select that ring that doesn't have the details and delete it by clicking Alt on it pretty much. So now let's just make another duplicate here of the upper ring and bring it down here as well. And in that case, we don't want to rotate it 60 degree. Let's also select the one that we want to delete and delete. So now we can do the same thing over here. Let's take that element with the nice details. The pivot is already in place, I think, but let's just hit that pivot button. Then let's duplicate it and let's rotate it 90 degree here. Press Alt on the one that doesn't have the details and let's delete it. And that is our maze high poly. Now there is only one more thing that we have to do. You can press tab by the way. Let's just for fun add some chrome material here on it and let's render it. That button here will render it and then pressing tab you can sort of see it full screen without the clutter. But let's put it back to our matcap white. Just one thing I wanted to quickly show you. And now let's go down here to where it says merge. And we're going to say merge visible and it's going to appear as a new tool then. So now over here we have it and it's all merged together. We still have the sub tools as different objects, but it's all merged as one as if you attach it together in 3D Max. Now let's use our decimation master. We want to put it to 15% and then we got to click pre-process all. So now it's loading. If you look here to the upper left, I'm going to cut that part out because that takes the longest. And then once that is done, we go back to the decimation master and say decimate all. And just pay attention, now it's still 15 million. And after decimating it, it's also going to take a moment, but not as long as the pre-processing. I'm just going to wait here with you. And now it's at 2.3 million. And it means that we have a much easier to handle high poly now in 3D Max. 3D Max would otherwise die on us. So having this optimized version here is perfect to work with once we are in 3D Max and we can even use it for baking. You won't see any quality difference really because this decimation master is just that good. So we are just going to click export and say maze underscore high poly save it out and i hope you liked it and the paid part of the tutorial will continue with the low poly the unwrapping the baking and then of course the texturing and substance painter so i hope you enjoyed it so far and that i'll see you there cheers tim